Welcome to Audrey's Reading Area. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Alexa, what time is it? Alexa, what time is it? It's 5 p.m. Alexa, what time is Audrey's Reading Area? Audrey reads in her area live at 5 o'clock p.m. Live at 5, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me on this fabulous, wonderful Multicultural Awareness Wednesday. Multicultural, Multicultural Awareness Wednesdays are the days that I read books about people from other cultures, other countries, or any religions or different, different things that we can learn about um, other people in other cultures. So before I get into it today, please click yeah, that, that like button. Please click that share button. Yes, then go on over to Audrey's Reading Area on YouTube. Smash that subscribe button for me. Smash it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, you guys. Now, the book that I'll be reading to you today is Australia ABCs. Australia ABCs, or in my words, the ABCs of Australia. <laughs> Australia ABCs is written by um, Sarah Hyman. It's illustrated by Arturo Avit Avila. It says Australia ABCs, a book about the people and places of Australia. Now, how cool is that? Mm. Back first, see the back? It says, find out about kangaroos koalas and yabbies explore the outback and the great land down under they call australia the land down under full color illustrations and fact-filled text offer a lively tour of the world's smallest continent so australia you guys just learned something right the world australia is the world's smallest continent each book in this series features maps a traceable flag a topic related activity, fast facts and fun facts, a glossary, a reading list, and then an index. Check it out. Australia ABCs, a book about the people and places of Australia. Again, it's written by Sarah Hyman, illustrated by Arturo Avila. And we're going to just jump right into this book. Got my little kangaroo here. Yes. Kangaroo. We know that we can find some kangaroos in Australia, right? Over here it says, good day, mate. This is how Australians greet each other. It means good day, right? A good day, friend. Mate, they call mate. That's That means friend. They call Australia Oz and themselves Aussies. Or uh, Aussies. Australia is an island country south of Asia. It is between the South Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean. About 19 million people live in Australia. It ranks 53rd in world population. And there's a little map of Australia. Okay. Northern Territory, South Australia, Western Australia, Queensland, and New South Wales. You have the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, Indian Ocean, yeah. Like, look at all of these here, all these countries here, right? All these countries, you got little Australia right there. Australia is also called the land down under because it is under or south of the equator. See, this is the uh, equator and this one is south of the equator. The land down under. Interesting, right? You guys are learning some stuff. Good day, mate. A, we're going to do the ABCs. Remember, ABCs of Australia or Australia ABCs. A is for Aborigine. Aborigine. Take it out. People have lived in Australia for at least 50,000 years. In the 1600s, explorers came from Europe. They called all the different people living there Aborigines. Aborigines still live in Australia today. 
Some paint their bodies for special ceremonies, but now they usually dress like other Australians. And it says, Aborigines have names for their different groups. One name is the Kuri. Other Aborigine groups are the Muri, the Bama, the Nunga, the Wangi, the Yongji, Yonggu, Yuin, and Palawa. All right. B is for boomerang. I wish I had a boomerang. I don't have a boomerang to show you guys. But here's the pictures of it. Shape almost like a V or an L. So B is for boomerang. A boomerang is a specially curved piece of wood. If you throw it with skill, it comes back to you. The boomerang goes around and comes right back. A boomerang is used for hunting and playing games. Ancient rock carvings in Australia show that people use boomerangs more than 14,000 years ago. Boomerangs. I wish I had one. I, don't, I haven't even seen one in person. C is for cricket. And doing the ABCs, we're up to C. C is for cricket. Cricket is a popular sport in Australia. It's played with a wide, let me turn this a little bit. It's played with a wide, flat bat and a hard red ball that is slightly larger and heavier than a baseball. Games can last from one afternoon to five days? I didn't know that. Cricket was brought to Australia from England. Interesting, huh? It was brought to Australia from England. Cricket. D, a diggery do. A diggery do. This is an instrument, you guys. It's an instrument, a, a didgeridoo. A didgeridoo is a musical instrument made from a tree branch that has been hollowed out, means they um, took out the middle of it, hollowed out by insects. Aborigines invented the didgeridoo long, long ago. They can make it sound like animal calls, a bubbling brook or roaring thunder. This is the didgeridoo. Didgeridoo. You can look that up and um, see somebody playing. Just look up didgeridoo on YouTube and you'll see a lot of people playing those. E is for eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. E is for eucalyptus. A eucalyptus tree or gum tree has oily leaves with a strong smell. Whoa. There are over 600 different kinds of eucalyptus trees. Koalas eat only eucalyptus trees, which are poisonous to most other animals. Did you hear that? Eucalyptus trees are poisonous to most, most other animals. However, koalas eat them. It's interesting, right? Australia's national flower is actually a flowering tree, the golden wattle. September 1st is National Wattle Day. Everyone is encouraged, encouraged to plant a tree or a bush in Australia on September 1st. F is for flag, flag. So Australia's flag shows Britain's flag in the upper left corner and the large star on the flag stands for the six states and two territories of Australia. The small stars stand for the Southern Cross, a group of stars you can see when you are south of the equator. Hmm. Australia, like the United States, used to be several British colonies or groups of people governed by Britain. In 1901, Australia became a country with its own government. Now it belongs to a group of nations led by Britain. Aborigines, have their own flag, plus the Australian flag. On the Aboriginal flag, the color black is for the people, yellow stands for the sun, and red is for the earth. Interesting, huh? G is for Great Barrier Reef. As you can see, the Great Barrier Reef. The Great Barrier Reef is the world's largest coral reef. Coral are tiny, brightly colored sea creatures 
Wow, the reef is made of both live coral and skeletons of dead coral. It is home to many beautiful fish and sea plants. The reef is so big, it can be seen from space. Wow, it's so big, it can be seen from up in space. Wow, H is for Harbor Bridge. Tour groups can climb stairs to the top of the Harbor Bridge in Sydney, which is Sydney, Australia. The climbers have to be tied to a safety rail as they climb. I'm scared of heights. Their reward at the top is a great view of the city and Sydney Harbor. H is for Harbor Bridge. The bridge spans 1,650 feet and carries up to 15,000 cars at a time. It has eight car lanes, two train lanes, a walkway and a bike lane. Wow. We'd have to go to Sydney, Australia. And if I ever went there, I would definitely check out this bridge. Definitely. I don't think I'd climb it, but I would check it out. Maybe drive across it. <laughs> I is for island. I is for island. Australia is the largest island in the world. I'll say, I'm going to say it again. Australia is the largest island in the world. Because remember, I said it was the smallest continent, but it's the largest island in the world. It is both a country and a continent. Most of the people live in large cities along the eastern sea coast, Tasmania, and islands south of Australia. Might be this little, this little island right here. Is Australia's smallest state. Aussies call Tasmania Tassie. Tassie. J is for jackaroos and jillaroos. Jackaroos and jillaroos. Australian cattle and sheep ranches are called stations. New ranch workers or station hands are called jackaroos and jillaroos. I'm going to guess. Could be wrong. I'm going to guess a jackaroo is the guy and the jillaroos the females. You know? Jackaroo the male, Jillaroo the female. I'm going to guess. Just my guess. All right. K. K is for kangaroos. And got my little kangaroo right here and the baby kangaroo in the pouch. I'll show you them when I finish reading. Kangaroos are a popular tourist attraction in Australia. A kangaroo is a marsupial, which is a mammal that raises its young in a pouch on its body. A baby kangaroo is called, can you guess? Do you guys know what a baby kangaroo is called? That's right. It's called a joey. J-O-E-Y. A joey. That's what a baby kangaroo is called. Australia is home to many animals such as the kangaroo that don't live anywhere else in the world, except perhaps in zoos. All right, L is for Lyrie bird. Lyrie bird. Lyrie bird. The Australian Lyrie bird gets its name from its amazing tail. The male's tail feathers spread out to form the shape of a Lyrie, an instrument that is like a harp. The Lyrie bird can copy the calls of other birds and animals. Wow. Interesting. Lyrie birds can even copy sounds such as ringing phones and honking horns. That might drive me crazy. Because if you're going to stand there and ring like my phone is ringing or something, it would just drive me crazy. <laughs> but like, bird, stop that. M is for money. This is an Australian $5 bill. Let's see about it. Australia's unit of money is the Australian dollar. Australian money includes coins and bills, just like the United States, right? The bills are printed on thin plastic instead of paper. Now that I didn't know. Australian money is printed on thin plastic instead of paper. So Queen Elizabeth II, Queen Elizabeth II is pictured on the Australian $5 bill. She's the Queen of Britain and also the Queen of Australia. I didn't know that. I don't remember knowing that. Since Australia became its own country in 1901, the queen is no longer as involved in the government there. Australians elect their own people to run their government. 
Wow. Queen Elizabeth II. Australian money. It's not paper. It's thin plastic. I'm learning with you guys. Look at that. N is for Nambung National Park. Nambung National Park. The Nambung National Park in Western Australia is one of more than 500 national parks in the country. In Nambung, visitors can hike into the Pinnacles Desert, which has thousands of giant rock pillars jutting out of the yellow sand. Wow. Nambung National Park. Rock pillars. Okay. O is for Outback. O is for Outback. Beyond coastal cities of Australia is a huge area known as the Outback. There are very few towns in the Outback. Most of it is desert. The rest of this land is grassland used for raising cattle and sheep. The Outback is also called the Bush. The largest sheep station in the Outback has about 70,000 sheep. Australia has nine times more sheep than people. Wow. Australia has nine times more sheep than it does people. Wow. P is for platypus. <laughs> platypus. The platypus is one of the only three mammals in the world that lay eggs. A platypus has a tail like a beaver's and a bill like a duck's. Platypuses live near rivers and lakes and they live only in Australia. Only in Australia. How cool is that? So we, we've got to take a vacation and go to Australia, huh? Q is for Queensland. Q is for Queensland. Queensland is where many Aussies vacation or go on holiday. The state is famous for its beaches, tropical islands, lush rainforests, and the Great Barrier Reef. Queensland began as a colony of British prisoners in 1824. By the 1840s, other people were moving in. Today, the state produces huge quantities of pineapples, bananas, mangoes, and sugarcane. Queensland. R is for radio. R is for radio. In the outback, children listen and talk to their teachers over the radio. I didn't know that either. The children live too far from any town to attend school. Students receive and send tests and homework through the mail. These days, they might use the phone, the internet, and videos, as well as the radio. Yeah, and, and we got into digital um, school because of the pandemic. We got into digital school. Little did we know, that's how they already do it in Australia. Um, the internet, the phone, videos, the radio. That's how they go to school. Interesting. Australian children attend school from ages five to 15. Many keep going to school and eventually attend universities. Most schools give students a summer vacation in January. When it is winter in North America, it is summer in Australia. So when it's cold here, it's hot there. When it's, yeah, when it's hot here, it's cold there. Oh, you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> S is for Sydney. Sydney, Australia. Sydney is Australia's largest city. Like most Australians, many of Sydney's 4 million people come from other countries. Sydney is on the east coast of Australia and has over 40 beaches. I am so there. I want to visit Australia. Talk about beaches. I'm there. <laughs> it also has one of the most famous buildings in the world, the Sydney Opera House. The Sydney Opera House. Both Sydney and Melbourne, Australia's two largest cities, wanted to be the capital. 
So the city of Canberra was built between the two and it became the capital. It's interesting. T is for Tucker. T is for Tucker. Tucker is the Aussie word for food. Wow. I'm going to go in the kitchen and get me some Tucker food. Australian food is a blend of different countries' cooking styles. I'm going to read that again. Australian food is a blend of different countries' cooking styles. Aussies eat lots of fish and self shellfish and meat cooked on the barbie or the barbecue. It's cooked on the barbie. The barbie means barbecue to them. A small beef pie, often served with sauce, ketchup, is a favorite snack, especially while watching foodie or Australian football. Australian football, they call foodie. So we've learned some things, haven't we? Barbie is what, you guys? That's right, the barbecue. Foodie is what? Australian football. That's right. Tucker is what? You got it. Good job, you guys. Tucker is the word, the Aussie or Australian word for food. Good job, you guys. Other Aussie foods. Lamingtons, a small square cakes dipped in chocolate and rolled in coconut. I could do the chocolate. I can't do the coconut. I don't like coconut. The Vegemite, a dark brown spread that comes from yeast and is used on toast and sandwiches. Vegemite. Bush tucker, foods found in the wild such as berries, fruits, and insects, as well as kangaroos. Crocodiles and birds, okay. Aborigines lived on bush tucker for thousands of years. Tucker, bush tucker. I am learning, I hope you guys are listening and learning. It's, it's so interesting to me. U is for Uluru, Uluru. The word kind of reminds me of the Star Trek lady, Lieutenant Uhuru. Lieutenant Uhuru. This is U for Uluru. In the middle of Australia, a huge red rock rises from the flat earth. It is almost as tall as the Empire State Building. This sandstone rock is known as Uluru or Ayers Rock. As the sun sets on the, in the outback, the rock seems to glow. Uluru is Australia's most popular tourist attraction. Uluru, wow. It's in the middle of Australia, guys. Don't forget, when you visit Australia, these are some of the things we got to visit. Uluru, look at that. Uluru is the ancient Aboriginal name for this rock, which is sacred to the Anangu Aborigines. The Aborigines call their religion the dreaming. Most Australians are Christians. Other religions that people practice in Australia, besides the dreaming, are Judaism, Islam, and Buddhism. V is for Victoria. Victoria. Victoria is a state in south southeastern Australia called the Garden State. Now here in the United States, what do you guys know what we call the Garden State? Which state do we call the Garden State? You got it. New Jersey, J E R S E Y. New Jersey is our Garden State, right? Farmers in Victoria grow vegetables, apples, and grapes. Ranchers raise cattle for meat and sheep for meat and wool. The city of Melbourne is the capital of Victoria. Many of Australia's factories are in Melbourne. Hmm. Victoria is named for Queen Victoria. She ruled Britain and the Australian colonies from 1837 to 1901. B is for Victoria. W, we're on W. W is for the Waltzing Matilda. Waltzing Matilda. Most Australians consider Waltzing Matilda to be the national song. 
It was written by Australia. Banjo Patterson, um, he, re he wrote it in 1895. The words waltzing Matilda mean traveling from place to place in search of work, carrying your belongings on your back. Waltzing Matilda, that's a song about traveling from place to place in search of work and carrying all your belongings on your back. Hmm. X is for exports. Australia exports more wool than any other country in the world. I mean, of course, they have like nine times sheep than they do humans. Sheep is where we get our wool from. In case you guys didn't know, now you know. So Australia exports more wool than any other country in the world and much of the world's wheat. The country also exports minerals such as coal, gold, and iron ore. Wool, wool, wool. Y is for yabby. A yabby is a, <clears throat> a freshwater crayfish. Yabbies look like small lobsters. They are a favorite Australian food. Catching yabbies is a popular pastime. Yabby. That right there. That right there is a yabby. Z. Z is for An Anzac Day. Anzac Day. Anzac Day is named for soldiers of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. Um, A N Z A C. Anzac. Who fought in World War I. Interesting. Anzac Day is a national holiday on April 25th, honoring people who have died in all wars. Children like to be in Anzac Day parades. Okay. May 27 is a day to honor the Aboriginal peoples, peoples and apologize for how they were treated in the past. Queen's birthday is celebrated in June. Boxing Day, December 26, is a day to relax after Christmas and give presents in boxes to people who work for you. Nice, right? Make your own rock paintings. So I'll show the page and you can pause it and make your own rock painting, you guys. There it is. Woo, there it is. Woo, there it is. Make your own rock paintings, you guys. And let's see what else we have. Fast facts. Fast facts. Official name, Commonwealth of Australia. That's Australia's official name. Commonwealth of Australia. Capital is Canberra. Official language is English. Population is 19,357,594. Area, whew, it's a lot of square miles. <laughs> 2,967,893 square miles. Highest point is Mount Kosciuszko, and it rises at 7,310 feet. The lowest point is Lake Erie, 52 feet below sea level. Type of government, constitutional monarchy, monarchy, monarchy. head of state, the British monarch represented by an Australian governor general, head of government, the prime minister, major industries, mining, food processing, chemicals, steel, tourism, natural resources is coal, iron, ore, gold, tin, and zinc. Major agricultural products is wheat, barley, cattle, and sheep. Chief exports, meaning they make it there when they export it out to other countries. Imports is when they bring it in. Exports is when they bring it out. Coal, meat, wool, alumina, iron, ore, and wheat. National animals, of course, the kangaroo. <laughs> the kangaroo, the emu, which is a large flightless bird. The national gemstone is the opal. 
So fun facts. Most Australian children spend their free time at the beach. They surf, snorkel, sail, and swim. Many join surf life, uh, surf, ma many join surf lifesaving clubs and, be and become volunteer surf lifesavers when Diamonds, but the opal is Australia's national gemstone. Maybe when I go out there, I'll get me a diamond, right? Keeper out there, huh? <laughs> An opal may contain many different colors. An Aboriginal legend says a rainbow fell to earth to create the opal. At the Hyde Park Barracks Museum in Sydney, Sydney, Australia, so it says. Australians can type their names into a computer to find out if their ancestors were prisoners. Wow. The longest fence in the world is in Australia. The longest fence in the world is in Australia. The dingo fence is 3,700 miles. Wow. Built to keep wild dogs or dingoes from killing the sheep. Makes sense. We have a glossary. I'm going to show this to you so you can pause it and take a look at it. Glossary. You can pause it at any time. I'll tell you the words. The words are Aborigines, Bush, Colony, didger Didgeridoo, Equator, Marsupial, Monarch, and Strine. You can um, rewind and pause to get the definitions of those. Wow. The end, you guys. The end. Australia ABCs. A book about the people and places of Australia. Wow. That was pretty interesting. I learned a whole lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for being here. Thanks, Mom, for being here. And thank you, Patsy, for being here. Um... Emlyn, mwah, mwah, mwah. love you, Emlyn. Shout out to my niece, Emlyn, who is here now. Carolyn, hey, Carolyn. Aw, Carolyn is my lovey cousin, my lovey cousin poo. Carolyn, <laughs> love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all your love and support. Special shout out also to, yes. Oh, Patsy, I gotta mention her crew, her family, her kids, yes. All of them, thank you guys for being here. But special shout out goes also goes to Ellie, my cousin Ellie, my girl Sheena G, my girl Shandrika, and my girl Victoria, Victoria Henderson Poole, who always, 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 every day share my videos. You guys, please go ahead and share my videos. Click like and share it with everybody. Then going over to YouTube, smash that subscribe button, smash, smash, smash it up. Smash it up for me, you guys. I am gaining, 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 slowly gaining subscribers. I'm getting there. I'm not quite at 1,000 yet, but I'm getting there. Please, please, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button and tell everybody about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here once again on this wonderful Multicultural Awareness Wednesday. I read to you about Australia, and I will see you again tomorrow live, L-I-V-E. I'll be here live at 5. And I will see you there and see you then here at Audrey's Reading Area.